Um, absolutely. No, we can, let me just bring it up. <laughs> no, let's, um, let's talk about some of the tasks because I do want us to, you know, move on, clean slate. The biggest thing is if you haven't had me before, I know it's hard to study for somebody new. Um, I do too, because it's just like, yeah, it's like, boom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, please please know that like listen grades are just like a, a snapshot you know like sometimes we take really good pictures and sometimes we look like you know like who took that that's like a test you know it's like okay maybe you weren't prepared maybe it's like oh we're having a family photo okay i forgot you know maybe you didn't study the way i asked you to study for application or it, it's okay. All right, so let me share the screen so that Abigail doesn't feel left out at home. We're gonna go over the- Thank you. All right. So the order of the layers, um, order of the earth's layers from the least dense, which is a little bit backwards from the way I asked it on the Kahoot. The least dense would be continental oceanic um, mantle, outer core, inner core. The Earth's magnetic field, that's, that's the core. It's the outer core that um, rotates around the inner core. Um, is there any one particular thing you wanted to know about? I didn't know what you were talking about. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the hypothesis, not the theory, the hypothesis, continental drift. Imagine that. <laughs> um, the driving mechanism, like what makes plates move? And that is convection current. It's that heat, it's that density difference. You heat something up, it goes up. Then it cools off and it goes down. And the plates ride on that. The point of the earth where the earthquake originates is the focus. And right on top of that is the epicenter. Minimum number of seismographs, three. Remember, it's called triangulation, so try three. Why do we see light from fireworks before we hear the explosion? This came, um, this question came from when we discussed um, light waves and sound waves and seismic waves. And like what is fastest, what is slowest? So we see light first because light waves travel the fastest, you know, the speed of light, fastest thing on the earth, then speed of sound comes next. Sound waves, all of those things are correct. They're like an accordion. Those are called compression waves. It requires a medium that, you know, sound does not happen in space. What is density? It's mass per unit of volume grams per centimeter squared or grams per milliliter. Buoyancy is just the upward force of a fluid. That fluid could be air, that fluid could be water, anything like that. Oh, that's the wrong one. Point at which a liquid turns to gas. What is that guys? It's the boiling point. There's the actual test. Uh, let me keep going. <laughs> Density, buoyancy. If you're, if you are in a pool, your weight doesn't actually change. Like, you, you know, you don't suddenly become, you know, trust me, I would be in a pool now <laughs> all the time, but it feels lighter because buoyancy helps lift you up. What is not made of matter? 
a rainbow because it's just bent light. <laughs> uh, so the flat part of this graph, the latent heat diffusion, but it doesn't matter. We talk about the flat part of the graph versus the up part of the graph. Flat part of the graph, it's changing the solid to a liquid. Yeah, solid to a liquid. And if we look at the slope part of a graph, this is where it's raising the temperature of the ice. The temperature is actually moving up. And... All right, this picture is one of the things that I pitched. It's one of the questions I just threw out because you had a divergence and a convergence together, which is the way it looks on the earth, but that is not the way it looked in your books, in your little flip books that you drew or that I drew for you. So that is why I was like, oh Lord, I screwed that one up. So uh, let's see what this was. Where would the newest crust be found? Well, at the, a spreading center that in the middle of the ocean, which is part A. So that's where they're moving apart and new crust is coming up, the magma is coming up. Uh, where would the volcanic mountain range be found? Well, at a subduction center, these are mountains, those little triangles. So definitely B, but where else are volcanoes found? They're found at the spreading center. They're underwater volcanoes. So B and W would be possibilities for those volcanoes. And the deep sea trench, that's exactly where the subduction zone is. So that would be Y. Uh, if two objects have the same volume, but one feels heavier, what can you tell me about the density? It has, it has more mass. If it feels heavier, it's gonna have more mass. It's going to have, which means it has a higher density. What is true of a convergent continent to continent? Yes, they form folded mountains, like the Appalachians or the Himalayas. There is never a subduction zone because they're too, they're not dense enough. They just, it's like that beach ball in the pool to pop back up. Fault zones will form, yep, rocks will break. So all of those things are true. Now the book that you're supposed to read. <laughs> and I tried to make it really far apart so that, you know, there's 100 versus 23,000. The answer is 23,000 people died in that eruption. And what killed them? This is what was so sad. It was the mud flow, or it's also called a lahar, which we'll get into um, more. But so they were trapped in mud and they couldn't be rescued because they blended in and it was like being cemented in place. So basically they starved to death if they hadn't already bled out or been suffocated. It was horrible. And the best choice, if you've not had me before, look for words that you can just ignore. And just, okay. So what forms the Andes Mountains? First of all, the Andes Mountains are volcanoes. So had to know that from your book. If we put the last one, it That's right. <laughs> I promise I'll read it. So this was a... <laughs> no, but boy, I love you for your honesty. <laughs> the continental subduct, no. So continent does not subduct ever. Oceanic subducted under continent. Yeah, that's the only one that says that. Oceanic subducted under a continent. So yeah, I would have picked that. <laughs> hmm. 
<laughs> I like that information. All right, the seismogram. Okay, so let's see. So first of all, you had to find the one, hey Dawson, you had to find the one that was at the zero mark. So we're looking at this. And let's see, at what minute do surface waves first appear? Well, surface waves are the very last waves that come in. So it looks like our surface waves came in right around the 40 minute mark. At what minute um, is the largest primary wave? So it's one of the big waves. It even gave you a range. <laughs> like, oh, that's a, that's a big one for a primary wave. So anywhere between 10 and 20 minutes. And again, you kind of had to know, okay, where are primary waves gonna be located? And which ones have the largest amplitude? So you had to know what, an, the amplitude was, which is the height of the wave. Ooh, these S waves, they're huge. So that's how we get the largest amplitude. It's also the largest mark on a seismogram. Uh, what drives convection currents? Heat from the core. The heat has to come from underneath. Just like cooking on a stove. We don't like blast heat down from the top. We cook from underneath. Same thing in the earth. Uh, the theory that the earth's outer crust, blah, 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 blah. That is the theory of plate tectonics. African and North American plates converge continent to continent convergence, and they formed us, Appalachian Mountains. A real world example of ocean to ocean divergent boundary, Mid Atlantic Ridge. What discovery led to the understanding of the mechanism that drives plate tectonics? Again, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. And this one was kind of like a riddle. Like if this one is more dense than that one. And I believe we had water on top. Let me see. Do, 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 do. Yeah, water is on top at C. So it's C, A, B, D. Do you wanna go over your density problems? Yes, no. I, usually, if you got it, you got them. If you didn't, you All right. So that was the test. Um, your second test, your midterm exam, it is going to be um, set up like this, okay? It'll be like, we come in here, we take it online, you get your score immediately, I get your score. And I can also take a look. I don't know if the other class told you that there were three questions that too many people missed. So I pitched it and added 15 points to everybody's test. We just pretended like everybody got it right. Um, then if you emailed me, you know, some of you got five points, some of you got three points, I've, that's been added as well. Okay. Now, Abby, do you have any questions at home? I think I'm good for now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. I'm going to let me move this. So I want you guys to join me at join.nearpod.com. If it has to be on the screen, that's fine. I'll be running most of it from my screen today. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right. Everybody there? Okay. Just kidding. <laughs> Um, I'll take a look. I think what I'll do is um, we'll have part two of the book, and I'll give you until the third um, test to get that read. All right. Oh, I've only I got four of you. Oh. Let's get a few more of you in here. <laughs> you go to join dot nearpod dot com. <laughs> <laughs> Gotcha. <laughs> this is a safe space to be laughed at. <laughs> He's a goober. All right. Let's see. Maybe I'll hide your names. I can't remember. All right. So here we are at volcanoes. Yay, death, destruction, it's crazy. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do teacher plays this. Continue, I have to make sure I've got audio. I hope. Oh, whoops. So here we go down through the crust. <laughs> Dramatic music played. <laughs> so where does it look like we're up? Oh, where are we heading down? All right, we're getting there. We're going through the mantle. Now we're at the outer core. Now we've got our solid inner core. Please know that nobody is actually seeing the inner core or the outer core. <laughs> All right, but we're coming. What was that? What were those pictures? Do you want me to go back a little bit? So I have 56% of you who are not answering. <laughs> gotcha. And yes, if you if you guess convection current, you are correct. Now I've got to remember how to. There we go. So watch the picture because another question will come up. Oh, did you see that boundary? So I did hide your names, so there's no embarrassment. So what kind of plate boundary did we see where they were going? Good. Yep, we had divergent boundaries going on there. Oh. 
Oh, what about this one? There's divergent again, but right there. Take a look. What kind of plate boundary is that? Sorry, let me turn that off. All right, so if we had to think about this, it's not a convection that when you had one diving under the other and the volcanoes were forming, what are we looking at there? Transformer where they slide past each other and they just form earthquakes. It is convergent. Thank you. All right. I want to pause that for a second. Did you see the lightning strike? One thing that you will notice is that in almost every single violent volcanic eruption, it actually creates its own thunderstorm. So it creates lightning, which is static electricity from the ash that comes up and there's like millions, billions of particles of ash rubbing together. And so it generates an electrical storm. All right, now that the magma is out of the Earth's interior, what do we call it? Like what you were just seeing running all over the surface of the earth, what would you call that? Exactly. So when we discuss magma, we're talking about like inside the earth. And when we discuss lava, it's once it comes out of the volcano. That's the only difference. And with lava, the gases have escaped. This is the pyroclastic flow. All right. That was a fun little introduction there. <laughs> All right. So, volcanoes, now boring work. <laughs> they were named for um, the god of fire, Vulcan. And they erupt in through vents. And it happens when magma reaches the Earth's surface. So, I know we talked about with earthquakes, how they build up pressure, build up pressure, and finally it gives. Same thing here. Depending on the type of magma you have, it either builds up a lot of pressure or it just flows out a little more gently. And we call them quiet eruptions and violent eruptions. And I am recording this so that um, I'll post it under lectures so that you guys can have that. So easy way to remember the 
magma cake is it's all still inside. It's lava cake. It came out. <laughs> <laughs> I live out in the middle of nowhere, not a lot to do. <laughs> all right. So what kind of things come out of volcanoes? Well, obviously, lava. Doesn't come out of all of them, but it comes out of most of them. Pyroclastic debris and gases. Pyroclastic, it just means, that word means bits of fire. And so it's like um, different sizes of rocks that get blown out. You have everything from ash to something called the pili, bombs. It just it's just the size of the rock. Is that yes. All right. So the first type of magma or lava that I want to touch on is basaltic. Basaltic lava or basaltic magma, it is the hottest of all types of magma. So it's also the runniest. You really need to know that. It is the hottest and the runniest. Well, if it's really hot and really runny, doesn't really, it's not able to build up a lot of pressure. So basaltic lava or basaltic magma usually has quiet eruptions. Not that they're not dangerous. I mean, you know, it's a volcano. It's, you know, could completely disintegrate you. But with <laughs> basaltic lava, as long as you're not like stepping into it, it's you're usually fine, usually. So it can move pretty fast because it's so runny. Um, uh, 30 kilometers per hour. It's about 15 miles an hour. So if you were at a good sprint, you could probably outrun it. <laughs> I could not. <laughs> I'd be burned to death. But um, it also like cools pretty fast once it gets to the bottom. How long does it take? Uh, not too long. Once it hits the ocean, it actually turns into glass, um, obsidian. But at the bottom, it takes a few hours to cool off. But at the bottom, it's moving so slow that I could get away from it. So, is it um, like the salt of that inside is all that? It is. It is not. It is also basaltic. If I talk about basaltic lava, that means we're also talking about basaltic magma. I didn't know there was no. And there are, I think there are five different types that most geologists look at, but we're only going to look at three types of magma in this class because you're not going to be geologists. <laughs> All right. So with basaltic magma, when it cools down, it leaves, there are two different types. One is called uh -uh. <laughs> It's Hawaiian. And it looks just like big blocks or big cinders when it cools down. <laughs> and you can see that it's cool on top, but it's still hot in the middle. <laughs> but it's just, that's all it means is thick lava. Now remember, it's still the runny kind, but uh-uh, when it cools off, it cools off chunky. Then we have pahoe hoey. <laughs> Not kidding. <laughs> so, and this just looks like big ropes. And that is the only difference in those two um, as they cool. One is a little bit runnier than the other, but it's still basaltic and it's still the hottest and it's still the runniest. Yes. 
just another picture of it. You can see it just looks like big long pieces of like cartoon hair, like yarn. <laughs> All right. And at the very final step with basaltic lava, you it cools down and you get something called columnar jointing. And all that means is that it cools down in a large column. If you've ever seen Devil's Tower out in a state that I can't think of right now, <laughs> it's, a, it's like out west. But if you look up Devil's Tower, it is a whole giant thing of columnar jointing. It's pretty cool. It just cools in big columns. Like that's all those are. It is big columns. Do we have any of this around here? How many volcanoes do you know of in West Virginia? None. So while we do have a volcano in Virginia, which people didn't even realize was a volcano, which I always thought was pretty cool. Um, it's like right across the border in Monterey, Virginia. So if you go down to the mountains or over to the mountains in West Virginia, and you go through Franklin, you come to a little town called Brandywine, and there are lava deposits there. Now they were from underground, so it never made it to the surface, but it's kind of interesting. But I digress. All right. So pyroclastic debris. So lapilli, this is just like little cinders. And then bombs are just like the bigger stuff. It's also called tephra. It's just another name for the debris. So tephra, pyroclastic debris, it's the same thing. I would not want any of those things to come at me though. Not even like the little things. So, and then you have different, then you have like the ash in different sizes of ash, and then the lapilli or the little stone. That's all, just to show you some of the things that come out of volcanoes. All right. So I wanna show you just a little clip on comparing eruptions. Um, Lacey, name one famous volcanic eruption that you might know of, ever. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Anybody? Pompeii. Pompeii. Yep. What else? I don't know. Okay, that's fine. How about back here? I was gonna say Pompeii. That's a good one. Same thing? Okay. Yeah, Pompeii, they even have a whole museum of the dead people <laughs> that uh, were pretty much vaporized and turned to stone. Kind of a weird way to make money, but they have one. <laughs> we'll look at those here in a minute. But first, I wanna show you these. Now there are no questions associated with this, so you can just kind of watch. Mount Pele.
Crack it up. So that's 200 million tons. I don't even know how to say that one. <laughs> I'm not trying. Right. So when we talk about volcanoes, there are direct effects, which are um, things like the, the eruption itself, something that we'll get to called a nuée ardente or a pyroclastic flow, where superheated gases roll down the side of the mountain because of their density and just engulf whole villages. And it's something that they can't get away from. Oh, whoops, sorry guys. My bad. <laughs> so, pyroclastic flows, also called Nuwe or Don, and this is that superheated gas. So the ash and the gas roll over the side of the volcano, and they come down the side, and they it's just like um, you know gravity's going to take it downhill, and so whatever village or town or city is in his path, that's going to be wiped out. And I want to show you just very quickly. Um, like what happened? These are actual, this is what happened in that village of Pompeii. This is what happens when a new AR daunt hits a, hits a town. Um, this one was pretty bad. The people basically it vaporized them and the ash clung to where their bodies would have been and turned them to stone. 
And now there's a whole museum um, of the, sur not the survivors, of the victims of Pompeii. They only had, there's also a little story called the dog of Pompeii, which oh, it's sad. Um, let me go back to Nearpod. But that's what a pyroclastic flow does. In your book, in your um, No Apparent Danger book, the first part discusses the lahar. The lahar is the mud flow. That's the other thing that really devastates people. <clears throat> and so you might be thinking, <coughs> wait a minute, <laughs> it's a volcano. How do we get to mud? Well, at the top of volcanoes, really, really tall volcanoes, um, especially the strato volcanoes, most of the time you have a glacier. No matter where it is on land, the top of a volcano normally has a glacier on it. Well, what happens when suddenly ice vaporizes? It's, you know, if, if, it turn, if it melts, vaporizes, it just depends on how it is melted. You have an entire glacier now that's water and it mixes with the ash and the mud. It, it does the exact same thing. It engulfs entire villages. Um, down the hillside from it or entire towns. And so that's what a lahar is. And then the Nue Ardant is the gas cloud. So those are two different types of pyroclastic flows. Both are very deadly. And so what kind of gases come out of volcanoes? Well, the basic ones are carbon dioxide. CO2, water, H2O, and sulfur dioxide, SO2. And what happens is they're, they're like in the magma mixed in, but as the density, as it raises up or rises up through the earth and the density gets less and less, the gases escape. And so it comes out of solution. And so we're probably thinking, well, okay, carbon dioxide, that's in our atmosphere all the time. We breathe that and breathe it out. Water droplets, that's also in our air. So it doesn't mean that it can't be deadly. One of the um, worst gases that come out, if you remember your chemistry and the, the halide family, you might have hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen chlorine, you know, so chlorine, chlorine, you breathe that stuff in, you're like pretty bad. But I want to show you how carbon dioxide can be trapped and come out of um, solution and be dangerous even when it's not part of a volcanic eruption. And that happened in Cameroon and in, in um, West Africa or Southern Africa, well, we'll find out, in Lake, Lake Nile. And these are the cattle and the people, but it suffocated over 1,700 people and all of the livestock. And nobody knew what was happening. Lake Magus, Cameroon, West Africa. A beautiful lake that is a source of fresh water and fish for the people that live 
from its shores. The lake fills a crater formed by a volcanic eruption around 400 years ago. But this volcano's days of looking havoc were far from over. So that's an old volcano that doesn't erupt anymore. A terrible tragedy. Hundreds of people have died in the natural disaster in West African state of Cameroon. There's not many people there. I went down to the US. There was no people. Everybody was dead. Entire villages in the Lysol, like to people have fallen dead while cooking or sleeping, leaving just a few survivors. There was no sign of struggle. The deaths were a mystery. Just sitting among the dead people, inside the house, some of them, the house, some of them behind the houses, animals everywhere, nine house, dogs, house, everything. So I was thinking for them. All the family, we were 56, but the three died. When I went outside and saw all my cows running in the ground, I went back in the summer and saw my wife and daughter had fallen and they were lying near a drum of water. Eyewitness reports suggested that the people and their animals around the lake had been suffocated by gas. It was white, white like cloth. It still go up in the air. It mostly went down near the ground. But if it was a gas, what was it? And where did it come from? After studying the lake, scientists discovered large amounts of carbon dioxide dissolved in the water. It had made its way up. Deep at the near, fissures and cracks of the meteor volcano, where once lava was ejected, now there was just gas. Over the years, huge quantities of carbon dioxide had collected deep in the bottom of the lake until August 1986. Through studying film teams straight after the disaster, scientists saw that there was a huge landslide. Landslide released hundreds of tons of rocks into the lake. They rolled down into the water where the carbon dioxide was dissolved. The disturbed gas then bubbled up. Water droplets formed on its surface, turning it white. Once the crater was full, a dense cloud of carbon dioxide. Heavier than the surrounding air, formed over the lip of the crater and raced down towards the village. It was nine o'clock in the evening. The inhabitants of Nyos had gone to bed for the last time. The gas crept over those sleeping in their beds. In this concentration, the odorless cloud was deadly. It suffocated the people while they slept. There would be no time to scream or cry out. Nios all but sick to death. The cloud of gas then travelled on to neighbouring houses. For 1800, death was now in end. The mystery of Lake Nyos has been solved. And now a simple pipe can safely release the gas from the bottom. The lake has went to gas again, but now the Cameroonian scientists are in control. All right. So the landslide basically stirred up all of the trapped gas that had been down there for the last 400 years. And that's what killed that village. 
it formed a fog because the water at the bottom, super cold and really cold um, things keep gases trapped. But when it went up to the top of the lake, you know, you're in West Africa, that's warm water. And so it immediately formed a fog of that gas that went down that hill. So these are the types of volcanoes that the USGS, the United States Geological Survey, um, discusses. In our class, we're going to look really at three of them. We're going to look at the strato volcano. You'll also see that called a composite volcano. They're about the, they are the same thing, they just have different names. The cinder cone and the shield volcano. So those are the three things that we are really going to look at in depth. Stratovolcanoes. They form at ocean to continental convergent boundaries. They're like if you ask a little kid to draw a volcano, this is usually the one they draw. You know, the great big steep one. And that's what this is. The magma is called andesitic. And it is just a combination between the basaltic, like we talked about, because that's from an oceanic plate, and rhyolitic, which we haven't talked about, which is from a continental plate. So this is just kind of a mixture. So they're pretty darn dangerous, even though we're considerate um, kind of medium. So this one has like medium heat, medium viscosity. Viscosity is just a fancy science word for stickiness. How sticky is the magma? So how easily does it trap gases? This one definitely traps gases. And what traps it in there? Let me see if I can, yeah. SI silicon dioxide, also known as quartz. The higher level of SiO2 in your magma, the more dangerous it is because that means the stickier it is. The more you can trap a gas, the more pressure builds up. The more pressure you build up, the more explosive the eruption. And these are just pictures of them. So Mount St. Helens, Mount Hood, um, the volcanoes that are in the Cascade Mountain Ranges in North America, those are your classic stratovolcanoes. How about a shield cone or a shield volcano? These are enormous, but they're flat. They're, they're not real giant tall wise, but they are really, really long. These form at ocean to ocean convergent boundaries. Also at oceanic hotspots, so like Hawaii is a shield volcano. This is where that basaltic magma comes into play. So super hot, super runny, not very, um, not very high levels of SiO2. I mean, they've got it, but just not super high levels of it. So there's a picture. Like I said, I will be, re you know, this is recording. So if you need to go back, that's fine. So the largest volcanoes on earth. This is Tamu Masi. 
It is an underwater sea mail. It's off the coast of Japan. Of course, it is a shield volcano. It, they are huge. The largest one in the entire solar system happens to be on Mars, and it is Olympus Mons. So if we looked at that, the side of like Mount Everest, Mount Everest, remember, is just on the continent. If we look at even the Hawaii, the island of Hawaii, all the way down to the ocean, look at how tall Hawaii is. Olympus Mons doesn't come close to it. It is enormous. Cinder cone. Cinder cones can pop up anywhere absolutely anywhere. They are like the acne of the volcano world. One of the most famous cinder cones, and this just cracks me up, is Paracutum. Back in the 1940s, Mexican farmer in Paracutum goes out one day. There's a five-story volcano in his field. Can you imagine? <laughs> like you go to bed, you get up the next morning. There it is. And it grew. It's like Clifford the Big Red Dog. It grew and grew and grew and grew and grew. And it was finally, let me see. The cinder cones are crazy. This is like what they look like. You know, they have a weird shape. They can actually form on other volcanoes. They can form by themselves. Uh, cinder cone is what is, uh, is the type of volcano that is in Virginia, in Monterey. And what do you think they eject out of them? Cinders. Remember geology, we're not that creative. <laughs> so a cinder cone usually ejects cinders, some, some mag or some lava. Calderas, calderas are what form when um, a volcano erupts and it leaves a giant hole. The giant hole where it collapses is the caldera. So it's, it's a big crater. They can be, the largest one is 62 miles wide, but it's basically, you know how we uh, drew pictures where you had like a magma chamber? When that thing empties out, the volcano collapses. And there are pictures of how the caldera forms. It's usually filled in by a lake. And a picture of a caldera that has not been filled in. A lava dome. Lava domes form inside previously erupted volcanoes. This little thing right here. So a lava dome is a dome of lava. I thought almost done. Just another picture from above. And then finally, we have the structure of volcanoes. And like I said before, I'll leave, you know, this will be um, put up for you probably by tonight. Um, when the volcano collapses. What, but fills in. Yeah. You sometimes caldera fill in with water. Oh, they become okay. lakes. Okay. Yellowstone Park. Three different eruptions. But I will let you guys go. We are done for the day. Thank you for waiting a little bit longer than normal. All right, Shiana, I know you didn't get this whole thing, but it is, this one has been recorded, so you're welcome to stay. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. McKean. Yes. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks, Abigail. Have a good day, girl. You too.